It's that time of year to gather together some classic cars. The Low Car Car Show visits the Gulf Coast for one of the biggest annual cruises ever staged. When the car show comes to you, who has time to go swimming? Welcome, car lovers, to another edition of the Low Car Car Show series presented by ARP. Well, I'm in Biloxi, Mississippi for Cruising the Coast, one of the biggest cruise in and car shows there is in the entire United States. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ted Jones, and we're going to show you some of that cruising here in just a few minutes. But first, let me get started. You stop at any number of lots here, and you can find beautiful cars like this example, a 1965 Pontiac GTO, which stood for Grand Turismo Amalogata. They commonly call them goats. This is the rare convertible. Very, very desirable. I love the red color. We call it resale red or some call it the rest me red, okay? It has a 355 rear end ratio. It's got the Muncie four speed transmission. Here's the other rare thing factory air conditioning, power disc brakes, power steering, power top factory tachometer and gauges and tilt steering wheel. This one was loaded up. Here's something else that's hard to find. These wood steering wheels were absolutely gorgeous, but boy, they, they cracked and had problems, and this one is in excellent condition. He's done a great job. He kept the original shifter in there for the four-speed, the center console. It looks like all of that is all original. I don't think he's restored or replaced any of that. Beautiful, beautiful car, and it is factory air conditioning. You can tell right here by where the air conditioning ducts are. I really like the GTO. He's got the custom wheels on it that you could order from Pontiac as an option on the GTO. This is a great example of Americana, something that started it all back in 1964 when Pontiac took the 389 out of a Pontiac Bonneville, dropped it down into a Tempest, and voila, the muscle car was born. And then the 442 and the SS396 and everybody else started copying that, but the first successful muscle car was the GTO in 64. Here's a 1965 that is an excellent example. And you know one of the best parts? You can own this, it's for sale. Mike has it, he said he wants $39,000 for it. And by the way, I hate to disappoint you, but it's a clone. Now, let's take a look at some of that cruising. down here and cruising the coast, that's what they call it. Here's a really neat car, I love these. This is a 1957 Thunderbird. Now, they made this particular bird three years, 55, 56, 57. They claim the 57 is the most popular for a couple different reasons. It had the 1957 Ford fins, just like the big boy Ford had on it, but it had the porthole windows on the removable top, and that was very, very popular and considered cool. Tuck and roll interiors the way they came, and this one, black and white inside, they all had 300 and 12 cubic inch engines, Ford Thunderbird engines. Then they took those and they put them down in some of the full size Fords with the call out badge up there on the front fender that said Thunderbird engine. They were taking advantage of the 1955 six and seven Thunderbird Pretty well known as a performance car. Now, look at this original style battery. Of course, it's not the original battery. It's the transistorized versions you can buy now. They're close to $400, but when you're having the car judged, that's really important. Notice how clean the engine compartment is and how everything looks perfectly stock right here. Here's the reservoir for the power steering over here. Over there is the regulator. They didn't used to have the regulator built in the back of the generator, okay? Back then they had generators. Sometimes they had alternators like this one does, but they had a separate regulator that said Fomoco. Just a few of the things to look at that you know this is all original Thunderbird. Now, in addition, this bird has an automatic transmission, power steering, nicely equipped, the Kelsey Hayes factory wire wheels. Those are not wheel covers, folks. Those are real wire wheels that you could get on the Thunderbird. Very, very rare. The other thing that was cool back in the 50s is the wide white wall tires. All in all, a very 
clean example of a 57 Burke. Oh, and this one's for sale too. Hey, you like that? This guy wants only $42,000. Cars for sale today here on Low Car Car Show Series presented by ARP. I'll be back with more from here at Cruise of the Coast after this. This edition of the Low Car Car Show presented by ARP is being brought to you by Low Car Performance Products. Quality, plain and simple. ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Aesthetic Finishers, your powder and ceramic header coating specialist. DG Manufacturing, don't lose your toys over weak cables. And by Buff Pro, a revolution in professional polishing. Welcome back to Cruising the Coast. Well, I showed you that 1957 bird, and indeed they're gorgeous. They quit it. Well, they, they made them real big in 1958, and they were kind of luxurious, but they weren't sports cars. They weren't cool. And they realized that, so Ford Motor Company said, we're going to try again. And so they came out of the 2002 bird. I didn't care for it, but Tim John's here. You have, what, three of these? Yes, sir. I have three of them. You like them. I love those cars. They drive nice. Very nice drivers. A lot of car for the money. Good fun car. Yep. Are they peppy? They run well. Yeah, V8 motors, 4.8, I believe it is. Oh, okay. And ride nice, though. Yeah, they did. A, Ford did a nice job on these cars, uh, bringing them back. Uh, the, the retro look and the, the modern drivetrain goes. It's, it's a really nice ride. Sure, and all the new 2000 stuff, airbags and everything like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Disc brakes. Disc brakes. The interiors really hold up well on these cars. They're rugged and take a lot of wear and tear. And, Need car for the money. 2002 model. You only want 13,000 for it. That's all. That's but it. But that one down there is 42. Well, that's the beauty of these cars. Like I said earlier, a lot of car for the money. I want the one down there. <laughs> oh, I, I like it better. I don't blame you. I don't blame you for that. But you know, these cars also they come with the hard tops and all, like the 57 with the porthole tops and everything. So they're neat cars. Well, since we're doing Fords on the show, let me tell you about a 1963 Galaxy 500 XL. And here's the other significant thing. She's got 390 cubic inches. Now, to be very honest with you folks, we used to call those motors boat anchors because they just uh, didn't put out the power for the cubic inches, okay? Once you got into the 406 or the 428 Cobra Jets or something like that, or even the Cleveland-headed 351 that was set up by Jack Roush, yeah, they would really go. But the 390 just was not that fast, considering it was a big block, 390 cubic inches. It had to stack up against the 396 Chevelle. No, it didn't get there. But these were really neat cars, and this one is a perfect example. Has power steering, power brakes, air conditioning, really straight body, nice looking set of custom wheels on it, knee deep in rubber. I really like the car, nice clean car. If you want to go back to the 60s, you want something comfortable, you can hit the road with, take the family out for a nice drive, something that's probably gonna hold its value. He's got this for sale for $19,500. He's probably deal on that just a little bit. Ford Galaxy 500 XL. Hey, here's another shiny red car. Let's go over to Britain, folks. 1955 MGA. These are very popular cars, really popular overseas, but here they're just about as popular. This one has been completely restored. Frame off restoration, okay? It's a solid, all steel, rust free body. He completely rebuilt the motor. He put a brand new interior in it, a brand new soft top on it, brand new front disc brakes. He has, again, the wire wheel with the knockoff hubs. Those are very rare and very, very popular. I've always kind of liked these cars. These are neat little sporty cars. Not exceptionally fast, but not a dog either. They get right down the road, but they're a lot of fun to drive. Oh, you think this isn't worth much because it's just this little British car? Guy wants $30,000 for it. But remember, it's completely restored. I'll find more beautiful cars for you after this.
Welcome back to Cruising the Coast, coming to you from Biloxi, Mississippi, here on the Low Car Car Show presented by ARP. Well, let me show you something real unusual, folks. Take a look at that. Just what is it, you wonder? Well, it's a 1956 Austin taxi cab. Why build an old London taxi? It's different. Oh, well, they got that right. Where did you find it? A friend of mine bought five of these in England, had them shipped over here. A friend is the one that actually restored it. It took him about five years, you know, because he did it by himself. He painted it and everything. Put a Ford running gear. And yeah, what's it got, a little 302? It's got a 302 Ford automatic overdrive transmission and Ford rear end air conditioning. This was the meter originally? Right, it's original meter, it still works. What did they put in there? That was a luggage compartment. That's where the luggage rode. Oh yeah, because there's no trunk. Right. Okay, a little tight in the driver's compartment. Right, real tight. You could have put five people in it because it had the jump seats. But you're gonna sell it. Yes. And you only want $10,000? That's it. This would uh, turn some heads cruising, huh? Yeah, I've got a lot of interest in it. How many people come up and say, what is it? Well, there's a few that have no idea what it is or where, you know, what it started out to be. He's right. There is a lot of room in this, and he's got a custom headliner up here done in the black and yellow. He took the black and yellow theme with the red stripe all the way inside to the interior. This is a really comfy seat, and it is air conditioning. I see the ducts right down there. There's the jump seat he was talking about that he could put another passenger in. A couple stereo speakers up there, a light. Yeah, this would be kind of cool, as a matter of fact. We'll take a break right now and catch up with the Performance TV people to learn a little bit more about ARP fasteners. Then I'll be right back here in Biloxi. ARP bolts the world leader in fastener technology, Tommy, from street rods to drag cars right up through top fuel. Absolutely. They make a bolt for about everything out there. They're the leading bolt manufacturer. I've used them for years, and you, you have as well. They make everything from a custom bolt to, you know, if you send them a blueprint, they'll make a custom bolt. But one of the favorite things I like here is we have a bolt kit for your car, you, if you're building a street rod, and they make this kit comes with just about every bolt, to, bolt and accessory on the engine. I mean, intake bolts, the header bolts, the water neck bolts, the distributor hold down bolts. Everything you bolt on an engine, you're gonna make it not only look good, it's gonna stay on the car. Well, and, and that too, but it's like, and it's all listed in the pack that it comes in, like this one, for example, for an LS1 up through the LS6 motor. The one that I have here in my hand, you know, if you want to go with the 12-point, stainless, never going to rust, you can do that. Our ARP's got a lot of choices, like like with the hex stops, too. Right, they got a hex head bolt here. Or if you also, you don't like chrome, you want to black it all out, they can get them in black oxide as well. And even if you're not doing a whole engine project and you just need one set of bolts, all you got to do is hop on their website, check it all out. It's arp-bolts.com. Ah, 409, you know that, that's my favorite engine of all time, 62, 3 and 4, 409s. Here's a 1962 station wagon with power steering, power brakes, and a 350. Sorry about that, folks. He put the 409 badge on this. Now, this would be a cool car. It's in excellent condition. It's kind of very different colors. And let me tell you, the twin snorkel, that looks like one of the 409 snorkels right there that they had, except this would have been painted in 1962. Interior on it is really in nice condition. She's a really nice station wagon. This would be a lot of fun. I'll tell you what I'd do. If I had this, folks, got the tachometer over here and everything add-on looking. He's got some add-on air there. I would absolutely put a 409 in this car. I don't care if it would be a clone. You'd have to put a 409 in this. Then it would be really, really cool. Okay, then there's this 1950 Chevrolet pickup truck right here. I like it. Air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, independent front end. He wants $24,000 for it. The guy really likes green, doesn't he? Not too bad, though, with this black, kind of a, a different look. Well-restored pickup truck, not too bad a price, okay? And then finally, over here is a clone 1963 Super Sport Chevrolet 4-speed 427. Now, the owner has told me that they made a few 427s in 1963. I had no knowledge of that. As far as I know, the 409 was the baddest thing you could get in 1963. I don't think they came out with the 427 till later, but he feels they did. However, he admits he put the 427 in this particular car. We'll take a break right now. I'll be back with more from Biloxi, Mississippi after this.
This edition of the Low Car Car Show presented by ARP is being brought to you by 3BR Power Sports, featuring all-weather USB and 12-volt power ports. Low Car Performance Products, quality, plain, and simple. Flowmaster, the exhaust technology company. ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. And by Garnett Technologies. Finally, a tank monitor that works. Welcome back to Cruising the Coast from Biloxi, Mississippi on the Low Car Car Show presented by ARP. We couldn't have a low car car show if we didn't have a plastic fast car, Corvette. What's one of the most popular Corvettes? The 63 split window. Only year they did that, very cool, but boy, is this one neat. He's customized it inside a little bit. It looks like he's still got the stock shifter there in place. He's put a Le Car, I believe that is, steering wheel right there. Oh, looks like some Dakota Digital Dash. Kept the stock configuration on the cluster. Sees that as some stereo speakers back there in the very back of it. Custom wheels, and this, folks, is one of the rare fuel injected. Probably the 327 fuel injected on the 63 Corvette. Uh, no, I don't think so. What happened to the engine? <laughs> well, let's just say I wanted to upgrade it and I went to an LS6 Corvette engine with the five speed from that transmission. I kind of upgraded a little bit to be a lot more comfortable for me and the wife to ride around in. Yeah, a little bit. Was it originally a fuel car or you just bought the emblem? No, I just bought the emblems. Okay, well, the fuel car. fuel injected now. <laughs> well, it is, that's true, and it's not Rochester. You know, the old Rochester fuel injection wasn't all that great. No, it wasn't. And that they had a lot of problems with them, and this here is just turnkey and it just goes. That's right, rides nice. Beautiful. We had to put a composite suspension all up underneath it, Ooh. rocket pinion steering. Four-wheel disc brakes upgraded to all wheel wood disc brakes, boost rims. Turn your rear tires? Oh yeah, she'll go. <laughs> she'll smoke them. You're looking down the bug catcher of a Camaro, folks. This is absolutely cool. It's only a 350, okay? But look, that's about an 871 blower, I would say, right there, with a couple of holly. Four barrels standing loud and proud, feeding juice down into this, turning it right there. Looks like he's running about a 10% overdrive, and I guarantee you he can turn the back wheels on this baby. I mean, he's got this fixed up as a street performer, pro street machine. Kind of like this truck here, except it's been slammed. Look how he lowered that truck down right there. Look at the flame job on the front of it. I really like it. And then, after he slammed it, he chopped the top. I mean, you talk about a radical chop. Look at that. Back here, there's no bed left. He has got some huge meats in this baby right here, so he had to roll this out and make room in her fenders for those big meats. Probably has a fuel cell right back there. He put a nice coating on this. Looks like a regular bed coating that you would put on a pickup truck bed, but that pickup truck bed's not meant to carry anything except the passenger and the driver very fast because if you come up front, two demon carburetors sitting on a wee blower. He's not messing around either. He's gonna get down the road real fast. More trucks next right here. I love the look of this orange and silver truck. This thing is absolutely gorgeous, very retro. Now, he didn't decide to cut a hood and put a big blower up through it. He just made this a gorgeous, good looking truck. Got some custom wheels on it. And back here, he really did a nice job finishing the bed off. I like this. He's tunneled the antenna, got the low car shifter in it right there. And speaking of low car, let's get their low down right now. On this week's low car lowdown, we're talking about black, plain and simple, the midnight series, Brian, and the, my eyes immediately go to the black braided cable. This is something that low car worked on for a very long time. We've got a long time in R&D because this is legitimately, this is the real deal. It's braided stainless steel. This is black braided stainless steel. We're the only company in the market right now that has this product out. And it took a long time in R&D because it, like everything else, it's a lifetime warranty. So we had to make sure when we did it, we did it right. You know, when we look at the Midnight Series or the, the Black Series, however folks want to refer to it, 
we have the black braided cable here, but we still have some anodized pieces and you guys do something special here. These are still stainless steel. These are still billet. The stainless steel pieces are all e-coated, so they come with a lifetime warranty as well and the billet pieces are all anodized. And there again, we've, we've done our homework to make sure we can put a lifetime warranty on this. And that's the same way it is with all of Locar's products. It is quality, plain and simple with the Midnight Series. No matter what you guys are looking for, you can go to Locar.com. Hey, you know what? They're celebrating their 25th anniversary this year. You can also like them on Facebook and remember the most important thing, made in the USA. Here's a beautiful 1967 Camaro. Now, this time I'm gonna look under the hood. It's a 67, the base engine in the 67 was a 327, okay? So what has he got under here? Whoops, what happened there? It's a 500 horsepower LS3. 500 horsepower? Yes, sir. That's more than a 327 made up. A little bit. Yeah. Did it go pretty good? You know, I hadn't got on it all the way yet. Only got a couple hundred miles on it, but so far, so good. Yeah, so, but you have to turn the tires. Yes, sir. You gotta do that. Right? Yes, sir, you got to. Absolutely gorgeous. What else have you done to the car? Uh, it's got a all custom interior, all custom suspension. It's got a heights front end, a Detroit speed rear, it's been mini tub, and a trim at six speed. It's a real street machine. Yes, sir. Is it for sale? Not a chance. Had oh, it, come on. Had it too long since I was 14. No. Right. So you had the original engine, original car? Not the original engine, but I had the car since I was 14. My dad bought it for me. I drove it all through high school and uh, started racing it for a while. Then four years ago, we tore it down and did this to it. So. Well, you can still race it. Oh, yeah. It's probably it, faster it than it was before it was a race car. So. But, boy, it'd be a shame to put this on a drag strip or something, though. This paint is gorgeous. What is it? It's a uh, house of color candy. Looks like completely put a custom interior in this. He didn't just stop at the engine compartment and everything he was telling us about. Custom gauges right there. He's a completely redid the dash. I mean, this baby is one sweet ride. Two beautiful rides. That's going to be a wrap for this week's edition of the Low Car Car Show presented by ARP. I'm Ted Jones. So long, everyone, from Biloxi, Mississippi. And finally, the Low Car Pick of the Week. This awesome automobile will be in competition for the Pick of the Year at the end of the season, a special December episode of the Low Car Car Show. What do you think will win? Stay tuned.